Good morning and welcome to the next episode of the Grey Nomad Knits. I hope you're all well today. It's an absolutely glorious day here in Perth. I'm coming to you from Perth, Western Australia. Um, my name is Jill, I don't know if I said that. Um, it's just beautiful. There is a little bit of wind around so I hope it doesn't interfere too much with the microphone. Um, Yes, as I said, my name is Jill. I'm coming to you from Perth, Western Australia. And you can find me uh, on Instagram as JillyMG60. That's an M for Margaret. <laughs> or on Ravelry as JillyMG. I'm sitting outside on my swing and I must remember to stop swinging. <laughs> I just want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all my new subscribers. I've had quite a few over the last month and some of you have left the most beautiful, delightful comments. So I want to thank you very much. We're only a very small group here at the Grey Nomad <laughs> and uh, so you're all very special to me. I'm thinking that um, over the Christmas break I might try and get a Ravelry group organised for us and also now that I've hit 100 subscribers I think that I shall have a look through my stash and give a little have a little giveaway of one of my most prized possessions. So stay tuned for that. I'll have more details on the next episode. Okay, we're going to move straight on to my works in progress. Um, I I have my same normal ones that you've seen over and over, plus one or two new things. So the progress on my um, uh, Arnie and Carlos. COVID blanket or quarantine blanket it's still going <laughs> slowly but surely I've uh, done a few more new squares and I've sewn another block of four together but I haven't brought them out to show you because I'm going to wait until I get the next strip completed and sewn on but um, last week I did do another four squares so there's this one now this is using the um, this is this red is just a cheap it's pure wool and it's for anyone in Australia um, who remembers the Lingcraft stores. I bought this a couple of years at Lingcraft, a couple of years ago at Lingcraft when they had a sale on. And it's the Clackeaton, and I think it's the Country range. And it had like a real tweedy fleck in it. I don't know if you can see the different coloured flecks. So I thought that went really nice with the autumnal tones in my blanket. So I've done that one. These are all made from scraps except for the uh, main colour which is from Outlaw Yarns and I can't quite remember which one it is now um, and I haven't got a ball band so I'll try and find it and if I can't well it's I think it's a mixture of merino and possum wool so that's that one some of these squares I have done before but in different colours this has got a very pale pale soft green which I think I used to make a hat for my daughter quite a few years ago when she went to Canada and she needed something really warm um, and I made her a beautiful cabled hat beanie as we call them here um, so that's some of the leftovers from that this is another one of the love squares I really like this square the last one I did of this I put the flowers in red so I thought I'd do them in this beautiful um, dusty pinky colour this time. It's not a bright pink so it goes really well uh, with the autumn shades. And this is using that same pale green that I used in my daughter's hat. That's a really pretty one. It's almost like a snowflakey sort of starburst, maybe a sunflower. But it's very pretty. 
I'm so over this blanket, but I am going to finish because I know it's going to be lovely when it's all finished. Um, I forgot to mention today, I've got my Marie Wallen blanket out. This was one of her Fair Isle Club um, designs, which you can't buy anymore. I've made two of these. This one was for myself and it took a year. And I made another one, uh, mostly out of the scraps I had left uh, and had to buy probably maybe another 10 or so balls of the Rowan felted tweed and that was for my brother-in-law and he loves it he and his partner love it <laughs> now my next work in progress is the slow but steady work on my uh, Jennifer Wood Carenza cardigan Jennifer Wood has her business called Woodhouse Knits I'm really loving it it's growing and it's growing and I I think I've told you before, I was so concerned I was going to run out of wool, um, but I think I'm going to be okay. I've just finished the last increase in the body, where you can see these lovely increases down the side. See how it increases from up the top? So it's going to be like an A-line cardigan. I've just finished those increases, so before I finish the body, I'm going to reattach the um, stitches that I've got on hold for the sleeves and I'm going to do the sleeves and then I'll keep a little bit aside for the collar and then I shall determine the length the length of the body will be determined by how much wool I have left and even now it's getting quite a good length as you can see so I think if I get another three or four inches on the body I'm going to be more than happy this is how the back's looking isn't it delightful because it's scrunched up a bit at the bottom if I can spread that out a bit so you can see how lovely that cable pattern is. Now this um, stitch marker that I've got in, between this one and that one, that was one ball of wool. So I've put those in to give me an idea of how I'm going. I think I still have, after the ball I'm using, I think I still have seven left. So I'm thinking I'll probably need two for each sleeve, maybe one and a half for the collar. It's a sport weight yarn, so it goes quite a long way. And I think that'll be enough to get a bit more length on the body, but we'll see. At worst, if I run out um, and don't have enough left to do the collar, I did see down at a local spotlight store, a Clarketon yarn, similar to that red one I showed you, but in a brown and it's almost the same, but it doesn't have the tweed in it. So I thought that could be quite a good option just to do the collar in that, because if it's slightly different, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I'll have to grow my hair so that <laughs> it will cover the collar if it's too noticeable. So that's the Carenza Cardigan by Jennifer Wood from Woodhouse Knits. And I'm absolutely loving this. Every time I get it out to work on it, it's an absolute pleasure. I love this wool that's from Bendigo Woolen Mills in Australia. Absolutely love it. It's a joy to work with. And I'm loving the pattern. It's got so much interest in it. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hang on, let me think. One. I'm going to count the charts. I think I've told you this before, but I think I actually got it wrong. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight charts. So that's pretty, and they're all doing different things at the same time. So thank goodness for Knit Companion. It's a great investment to knitters of the world if you haven't invested in it. I tell you, it saves so much heartache. Very Pink Knits has got an excellent tutorial on how to use it. Sometimes I go back to her tutorial to refresh this um, senior brain of mine, <laughs> but uh, she explains it all and makes it so easy and it is worth its weight in gold. So that's my Carenza cardigan by Jennifer Wood. And the next thing I'd like to show you is a market bag that I've been working on. I'm planning on starting um, a little shop next year we have an online platform here in Australia called Made It, M-A-D-E-I-T. And it's like an Australian equivalent of Etsy. So I'm thinking of starting up a little shop on there and I have a lovely friend, Florence, who's going to help me with that. Um, so we're going to look at doing that in the new year. But this is the first bag 
I did make a bag for myself as a, as a bit of a tester because I'm fairly new to crochet and that turned out pretty well. I did make mistakes and I learnt so much from making that bag. So this is the next one I'm making and I absolutely love this. And I have actually got a firm base to put in the bottom. I um, repurposed one of those firm liners that you get in the bottom of the shopping bags you purchase at the supermarket. Uh, but in future, I'm going to get some of that really thick, rigid plastic that you can line cupboards and shelves with and use some of that to give them a bit of a firmer base. Um, this is almost finished, but I've run out of the white. So I've got an order. This is cotton is from, once again, from Bendigo Woolen Mills. And I have ordered some more, but it's out of stock at the moment. So this is going uh, into the unfinished corner. I'm not going to call it the naughty corner because this has gone exceptionally well. I don't think I've made any mistakes. Um, these bobbles are where little loops will come over and attach. So you can have it like that, or you can open those up and have it out as a bigger bag. So I've just got a couple more rows to do here of the white and then the handles and then it will be finished. And I've bought enough some, I've bought some cotton in various colours so I can make a couple more of these in different colours. I'm also going to make some small produce bags. Um, now that I've retired, it's just nice to have an idea to maybe bring in a little bit of extra pocket money and while I'm doing something that I really enjoy doing. And you know what, if no one ever buys them, I'll have myself a whole pile of beautiful new bags. Now the pattern for this, there's not really a pattern, but I'm following a tutorial on a YouTube channel called The Secret Yarnery. And she's got some amazing tutorials and that's where I found this. So she's very easy to find her, her on YouTube. Um, she does some amazing videos. She has an amazing array of yarn in her house. And I have learnt a lot from watching her. Her name is Krista. So I don't think Krista watches my little channel, but if she does, a big thank you to Krista. Now I'm going to start a new project this afternoon. Um, my daughter has got, one of my daughters, who lives in a very small um, apartment here in Perth, has got in her kitchen this lovely, uh, quite, she's got very few cupboards in her kitchen. So she bought this cupboard to go against the wall. And it's like a pantry cupboard and the doors open out and inside of each door it's got all shelves built in so like each door is like this thick you open it out and she can store inside there all her containers with her flowers her you know pantry items and all that she's also got all her coffee making supplies in that cupboard because she loves her coffee and on top of the cupboard it stands about up to here on me so it's it's not right up to the ceiling or anything and on top of that cupboard she's got all her coffee her coffee maker and bits and pieces for making tea and coffee and she asked me it's not quite perfect the top of this cabinet when cabinet she bought it as a second because of the way the top piece of wood was so she asked me if i could crochet her something to go on the top to protect the wood that's there but also to pretty it up a bit now my daughter loves everything to do with the Indian culture. She loves Bollywood movies. She used to do a lot of Bollywood dancing and I think she'd actually like to get back into it. And she loves all those bright colors that are associated with Bollywood. So I'm going to start like a little granny square, I suppose like a sampler. I'm going to use this book and it has a whole pile of different ones in it. They're not the, um, what I call the old granny looking granny squares no offense I think they're beautiful as well but she wanted something a little more modern looking and this book has got the designs for so many different squares so I thought I would make it up out of half a dozen or so different squares and do a checkerboard pattern of bright colors with navy blue so this is the colors I've got there's all the colors so you can see the navy blue there and I think that'll just tone it all down nicely. 
Now, the coloured squares are also going to have this gold thread. This is made by Drops and I bought this online from Wool Warehouse in the UK. Um, so it's going to look very glitzy but it's exactly what she wants. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it all turns out. Now this um, yarn is the style scrap, the style scrap, <laughs> style craft special DK. So for anyone in Australia, it's what we call an eight ply. <coughs> it's a hundred percent acrylic, but it would have to be one of the best acrylic yarns I have ever had the pleasure to work with. I'm not an acrylic snob. I know it's not that great for the environment but in some circumstances it's warranted. If you've got a blanket you want to use outside a lot, it's perfect because the bugs won't eat it. This blanket here, I will have to bring in this afternoon. I can't leave it outside. Also, as it's going to have, have all her coffee stuff on the top, she'll be able to just take it off, throw it in the washing machine. Hopefully it won't fall apart. <laughs> I would highly recommend this to anyone who's allergic to wool or who wants something really hard wearing. Now, there's a bit of a story to where I got this. I ordered these two, along with the gold thread, as I said, from Wool Warehouse in the UK. I didn't quite know what other colors to get. Now, we have got a new store that's just opened in Perth, but they're not quite new. They used to be up in the hills area of Perth, but that's well over an hour's drive from our house. And with the cost of petrol now, you have to think of these things. <laughs> so, and also can I say that although our public transport is getting better, it could still be a lot better. And there's no way I could have got to this store on public transport. They had to close down last year during all the COVID lockdowns. And they have just recently reopened. Now the name of the store is Knit Pearl Sew and I'll put a link in the show notes uh, and they're now only about a half an hour drive from my house. I still can't get to it on public transport but the funny thing is I thought I would be able to. So I checked it all out on my Google Maps and I thought oh no it's a bit of a walk from the train station so I'll just take the car and I must say I'm very glad I did. It is in, it's a beautiful shop firstly, let me say that, but it's not in the area I expected it to be. I expected it to be in one of our, well, it's in a suburb called Bassendine, which is full of beautiful old homes, beautiful old stores, lovely shop fronts. I thought it was going to be in one of those old, older style shops, but no, it's right in the middle of a semi-industrial area. Now, have you, when I went to the shop I actually got stuck in the road because there was a massive big truck um, a huge big thing reversing into one of the businesses there and he had, couldn't because it was so big he was having trouble getting through the gates to the driveway so he went in then had to come out then he went in had to come out and then he went in and he still wasn't right but he saw me patiently waiting and my driveway for this shop was on the other side of the road and just on the other side of the truck. So he very kindly let me through. Well, I have to say to the owner of Knit Pearl So, you couldn't have picked a better location because there's so much parking there. You drive in and you don't have to pay for parking. It's easy to park and they've got plenty of space in the store and it's absolutely beautiful. It was so well laid out. Uh, for anyone in Perth who hasn't been there, I highly suggest that you go and have a trip out there. They were actually had quite a few customers in and out while I was there as well. Now I had heard that they sell this and that's the main reason I went there to pick out the rest of the colours for this thing I'm making for my daughter. When I got into the shop I couldn't see it. so. Uh, I think her name is Lena, but I might be wrong. Lovely lady who owns the shop. She said they're not going to be stocking it anymore, but they still had quite a few balls out in their storeroom. 
of various colors so she came and laid them all out on a table for me and I was able to pick all those beautiful bright colors that you just saw so she couldn't have been more helpful and a wonderful big thank you they're replacing this with a, another acrylic yarn and I think it's one of the sheepies variety and I should have learned how to pronounce that properly before I started filming I can't remember what it is but I've noticed already online quite a few people are using it so I will try and get the information for that for next time but this shop was just beautiful and what I was absolutely delighted with they stocked quite a big range of the West Yorkshire spinners yarns so I picked up this beautiful sock yarn now this is the signature four ply 75% wool and 25% nylon it's a hundred gram ball with 400 meters so there's more than enough for a pair of socks in there I can't resist a ball of sock yarn now really the last thing I need in my stash is more sock yarn but I love to support a really good bricks and mortar shop so every time I go into one I treat myself to a ball of sock yarn and that doesn't break the bank and it just helps them a little as well and I also um, picked up these two which are the sheepies brand now they look very similar Where's the... there it is <laughs> So it's called Our Tribe. Um, now this colour is called Excitement. And this colour is called Marie, which is my mother's, which was my mother's middle name. They're very similar, but I think they're both beautiful. So they're going into my sock yarn stash as well. I also bought while I was there a box of these are uh, split stitch holders stitch, stitch markers I'm using them a lot more now with all the crochet I've been doing so I think they're going a lot of my old ones have broken so I think they're going to be most useful I quite like the colored ones because you can use a different color to mark a different thing that you're working on um, for example that bag I'm making at the moment I've got markers where the handles are going to be and I've got other coloured markers for the start and end of my rounds so I can use different colour coded markers for each purpose which is great so I was very happy to see that shop I'm going to another beautiful Perth wool shop on Friday with my friend and it's called Calico and Ivory and it's long been one of my favourite stores so I'm going to ask the owner very kindly if I can take some video in her shop but firstly here's a little bit of video that I took at Knit Pearl Sew with the owner's permission and a few photographs. I hope you enjoy.
you enjoyed that. Take my glasses off. Welcome back. I have a finished object. Can you believe it? After 18 months, <laughs> I have finished my first double knitting project. I blocked it yesterday, so it's all nice and flat and level now. And I just thought I'd put it on to show you. It actually goes quite nicely with my brand new top that I made myself from a um, pattern emporium pattern called the Simple Tea. All sewed together perfectly. I'd highly recommend that pattern. Anyway, here it is. Now all the ends are sewn in. I'm now going to take it off because it's going to be 27 degrees here today. You can really see the changes in the colours from both ends. Um, my daughter will come up for tea one night and then I shall give it to her. She knows she's getting it. It's a really good length. It's going to be really warm and cosy when winter comes back because although it's only fingering weight, it's double knitting, which means it's double the thickness and it's very warm and very squishy. Look how soft those colours are compared to up here. The yarn was a Hobie yarn um, from Denmark. Oh goodness, I can't quite think of it, but I'll put the brand in the show notes. It has got some cashmere in it, so you can imagine how incredibly soft it is. I'm just so happy with it. Look at, look at the different colours, they really show well there. This pattern um, was adapted into the scarf by, uh, into a double knitting scarf by Alastair Post Quinn. It's originally designed the pattern by um, Kieran Foley. I think I've got that right. Uh, and I have never done double knitting before. And that's why it took me so long. And I did make a few mistakes, but in the end, no one else will know they're there except me. So I didn't even try to unpick this. Uh, I just left them. <laughs> but in the end, I don't think it matters. I'm so happy with it. I'm just going to keep showing you this because it's 18 months of very hard concentration style work. And I just want to show you it now in all its glory. haven't tried double knitting before I urge you to give it a go at first it seemed really complicated but in the end it wasn't um, you just got to get your head around it at first and then it becomes no more difficult than any color knitting project I also put the graphs for this the charts for this on my knit companion app on my um, tablet on my iPad and that made it a lot easier to keep track of the rows. <clears throat> I really love it and I know my daughter's going to love it. As I said, I blocked it yesterday and I took a little bit of video of me blocking it. So, and I shall put that in here and then I'll just show you a few photos of the finished product and also some beautiful photos from a walk I did along our coast uh, last week. And I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you in roughly four weeks time. Bye. And just quickly before I go, I forgot to show you this. This was my uh, first crochet bag that I did to try and learn what I was doing. And I made heaps of mistakes, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the result.
Thank you.